Glycerol stearate and PEG100 stearate is one of my favorite emulsifiers. It is so versatile that you can use it to create everything from sprayable lotions to emulsified body butters to body yogurts. In this video, I'll share with you why it is so special, how to use it, five free formulations to make with it, and more. Hey bees, I'm Marie from Hubble Bee and Me, and today we are doing another ingredient deep dive, this time into glycerol stearate and PEG100 stearate. As always, think of these ingredient deep dives as the partner video for the Humble Bee and Me encyclopedia entry on the same ingredient. I'm trying to include everything you need to know about this emulsifier in this video, but if you have more questions, I have created a lot of educational content about this emulsifier. If you'd like to learn more, the first thing you're going to want to do is read that full encyclopedia entry over at humblebeeandme.com. Up next, I would recommend checking out the super simple moisturizing lotion formulation and video I shared using this emulsifier. In addition to being a very beginner friendly, super simple formulation, the post and video for that formulation contain a lot of information and comparisons with a similar emulsion made using emulsifying wax enough to help you understand how the two emulsifiers differ from one another. And lastly, I have created a couple patron exclusive videos all about this emulsifier. So if you would like to check those out, please consider becoming a $10 and up patron. In this video, we are going to be discussing what glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate is, why we use it in our formulations, how to work with it, what you can use instead, and then we'll wrap up with five free formulations that you can make using glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate. Let's dive in. What is glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate? It's a very versatile non-ionic emulsifier that creates silky smooth ultra light oil and water emulsions that are highly customizable. This emulsifier is manufactured by a lot of different companies and is sold under a ton of different names. So that is why I am referring to it by its inky rather than by a trade name. From the data sheets I've looked at, this emulsifier is comprised of roughly a 50-50 blend of glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate. They do take a look at the data sheet for the precise thing that you have bought to know what's going on with the thing that you have. What is really special and exciting about this emulsifier is that it doesn't thicken our emulsions, it just emulsifies them. This gives us as formulators complete control over how and how much we want to thicken our formulations. Because of this, I often refer to this emulsifier as invisible or naked because it really isn't noticeable in finished products the way something like BTMS 50 or Polo Wax tend to be. Why do we use glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate in our formulations? Very basically speaking, we use it because it's an emulsifier. It creates emulsions, it brings together oil and water, and it can also be used to add rinse off to products like cleansing bombs. I'll choose glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate instead of emulsifiers like emulsifying wax NF because it gives me way more control over the formulation as a formulator. It's kind of like driving a standard or manual transmission vehicle instead of an automatic. Since this emulsifier doesn't thicken our formulations, it gives us the ability to choose exactly how thick we want our formulations to be or thin and how we want to thicken them. To really illustrate some of the exciting possibilities that a non-thickening emulsifier opens up for us as formulators, I've created eight sample formulations to show you. Each emulsion includes the same percentage of carrier oil or butter and then enough emulsifier to emulsify. I've used glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate for half of them. And then for comparison, I've used emulsifying wax NF for the other four. If you want to see the full formulations written out, I have shared these as a patron exclusive with my $5 and up patrons over at patreon.com slash Marie Rayma. Formulation number one features 12% liquid oil. You can see that the glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate emulsion is so thin that it's kind of just like milk. And it's actually so thin that it's really not stable. This formulation would need some sort of a gum or a fatty thickener in order to make it thick enough that the emulsion won't split over time. In comparison, the emulsion made using emulsifying wax NF is definitely a bit more viscous and was more stable. Our second formulation features 24% liquid oil, so twice as much liquid oil as the first formulation. You can see the emulsion made with glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate is a bit more viscous than the one made with just 12% liquid oil Oil, but it's still very fluid, something a bit closer to say unwhipped heavy cream than milk. Meanwhile, the 24% emulsion made with emulsifying wax NF is substantially thicker than the 12% emulsion made using emulsifying wax NF. That is because the emulsifying wax NF includes cetyryl alcohol, which is thickening the formulation. The larger the oil phase gets, the more emulsifier we need and the more cetyryl alcohol ends up in the formulation simply by using more emulsifying wax NF. Formulation number three is 30% shea butter. 
butter. Despite shea butter's solidity, you can see that the emulsion made with glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate is still very fluid. And on the skin, it's really lightweight. It really just feels like lighter shea butter. In contrast, the emulsion with 30% shea butter emulsified using emulsifying wax NF is really thick and creamy and feels much richer and heavier on the skin. And lastly, we're going back to that 12% liquid oil, but I've also added 2% of the gelling agent Sepamax Zen. You can see that both formulations are substantially thicker than their Sepamax Zenless 12% counterparts. The emulsion made with glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate has much more of a body yogurt consistency, while the one made using emulsifying wax NF starts to get into a bit of a body flubber territory. They're both really interesting consistencies, but they're also really different from one another. If you wanted to stick to a similar oil phase size, you could modify the formulation using glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate to get body flubber, but you wouldn't be able to take the formulation using emulsifying wax NF and make the not body flubber without dramatically reducing the size of the oil phase. How do you work with glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate? Since it is a solid, it will need to be melted to do anything, so include it in the heated oil phase of your formulations. It melts around 50 to 60 degrees centigrade. It's more potent than other emulsifiers you might have worked with, so I tend to use it about 9 to 14 percent of the oil phase compared to 20 to 25 percent for an emulsifying wax like emulsifying wax NF or Redomols SCG. In my experiments, I found that it has an upper oil phase limit of about 56%, anything higher than that, and it just doesn't emulsify. If you'd like to learn more about that, I created a patron exclusive video detailing a lot of experiments that I did with this emulsifier back in September, 2020. So please consider becoming a $10 and up patron if you would like to check that out. This emulsifier tolerates a final pH range of approximately four to nine. Now, keep in mind, because glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate doesn't thicken our emulsions, it's a lot easier to create an emulsion that is so thin that it isn't stable. You've already seen this in action with the 12% oil emulsion I showed you a little bit earlier in the video. So unless your oil phase is quite large and or is primarily made up of solid butters, you will likely need to incorporate something in your formulation to give it a viscosity boost so that everything stays nice and emulsified. And of course the magic of this emulsifier is that you get to choose what that is. Do you want to use silky powdery settle alcohol or rich creamy stearic acid or perhaps you'd like to try a bit of a true wax like beeswax or go with a gum like a bit of xanthan gum or hydroxyethyl cellulose or maybe you'd like to create something wonderfully wobbly and use some sort of a carbomer or gelling ingredient like sepamax zen you can have a ton of fun deciding how and how much you want to thicken your emulsions when you are working with glycerol stearate and peg 100 stearate what can you use instead of glycerol stearate and peg 100 stearate i'd say this is one of the questions that I get asked the most about this ingredient and unfortunately this one is a great big quagmire of it depends. I'm afraid I don't have any great one-to-one -one really easy swaps to recommend. It's really going to depend on what you're making, the desired end product, and you are almost certainly going to have to do some sort of reformulating to get these alternatives to work with the formulation that uses glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate. If a formulation includes both glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate and a fatty thickener like cetyryl alcohol, there is a chance that you can use a self-thickening emulsifying wax like emulsifying wax NF or Olive M1000 instead of both the original emulsifier and fatty thickener. Just how successful this will be will really depend on how much the original formulation was counting on the invisibility of the glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate. For more information on how to do this, make sure you are checking out that super simple moisturizing lotion with glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate formulation that I mentioned earlier. It's got a bunch of information and demos and whatnot, so yeah, head on over and check that out. If the formulation you are looking at chose glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate as the emulsifier, specifically so the formulator could control the viscosity in a way that you couldn't do using emulsifying wax NF or all of M1000, that's where things start to get kind of tricky. For a bit of a food analogy, think of glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate as all-purpose flour and think of an emulsifying wax like emulsifying wax NF as a chocolate cake mix. If you've got a chocolate cake recipe that calls for all-purpose flour and you don't have all-purpose flour, you could probably make the chocolate cake mix kind of work and end up with a chocolate cake in the end because it's got a bunch of stuff in it already that you would want in a chocolate cake anyways. However, if you are looking at a recipe for a baguette, you're really going to need the all-purpose flour. You can't make a bag of 
chocolate cake mix work instead of all-purpose flour if you aren't making chocolate cake. In an instance where you really do need that flexibility of the glycerol stearate and PEG100 stearate, you're going to need to look for emulsifiers that emulsify but don't thicken. From everything I've read, sucrose stearate can be a viable alternative, but this really is an ingredient I have worked with very much. Both Skin Chakra and Formula Botanica have shared sprayable lotion formulations that use sucrose stearate as their emulsifier, so I'll link to some of those in the description box below so you can click through and learn more. I asked Lise Anderson of Lisa Lees, and she recommended a custom blend of sodium sterile lactylate, which is the emulsifier in Redomulse SCG, and glycerol stearate. In comments on a previous video, Helena and Emma suggested that Satirith 20 could be a good option. It sounds like blending Satirith 20 with glycerol stearate is probably the best option. I also asked Maggie over at Formulator Sample Shop, and she thought that Heliosoft made by Lucas Meyer Cosmetics could be a good option. Please know that I have little to no experience working with these alternatives, so if you do want to go that way, you are definitely going to be in test-it-yourself redevelopment territory, so have fun. Another way to look for alternatives is to read ingredient lists on formulations that have a consistency similar to what you are looking to achieve. We can't always buy all the emulsifiers that the big guys use, but you might get lucky. If you have a tried and true alternative, please share it in the comments below. If you are watching this video sometime after it's come out, please make sure you are reading the written encyclopedia entry, because if I have come across something since I published this video, it'll be there, because it is way easier to add a little bit of extra something something to the written encyclopedia entry than it is to add something to this video. And let's wrap up with five free formulations that you can make using this wonderful emulsifier. Formulation number one is my super simple moisturizing lotion made with glycerol stearate and PEG100 stearate. If you're a relatively new formulator and or if you are relatively new to this emulsifier but have lots of experience with emulsifiers like Emulsifying Wax NF, this is a wonderful place to start to get a feel for how this emulsifier differs from Emulsifying Wax NF. This formulation is based on the super simple moisturizing lotion formulation that I shared using Emulsifying Wax NF and really highlights the changes that you need to make to a formulation to use glycerol stearate and PEG100 stearate instead of Emulsifying Wax NF. Formulation number two is my Oat Cardamom Chai Emulsified Body Butter. This body butter features a large, rich oil phase, but it doesn't feel skiddy or too heavy because we've used glycerol stearate and PEG100 stearate. If you want to make emulsified body butters, I can't recommend this emulsifier enough. It's actually the same emulsifier that the Body Shop has used for their emulsified body butters for eons. Formulation number three is my Summer Solstice Body Milk. This formulation takes advantage of how easy it is to make really fluid emulsions using glycerol stearate and PEG100 stearate. Because this emulsion is so thin, it does include a small amount of Cepamaxin to keep things stable. It has a consistency comparable to about 10% milk fat cream and is just absolutely drizzleable. Formulation number four is my Cran Cherry Scalp Scrub. This formulation is mostly exfoliants and surfactants for scrubby foamy goodness, but it also includes a small amount of glycerol stearate and PEG100 stearate to emulsify in some cherry kernel oil for refatting. If you're looking for a sudsy, rejuvenating scalp scrub, definitely give this one a try. And our last formulation made with this wonderful emulsifier is my Strawberry Kiwi Body Yogurt. This formulation takes advantage of the nakedness of glycerol stearate and PEG100 stearate by creating a thin, small oil phase emulsion that is then thickened right up with some Cepamax Zen for a really fun, wobbly, yogurty consistency. Thickening this emulsion using a gelling ingredient rather than using a fatty thickener gives it a fabulously light skin feel. For even more formulations using glycerol stearate and PEG100 stearate, head over to humblebeeandme.com and check out the encyclopedia entry. If you scroll right to the bottom, there's a big long list of every formulation I've ever shared using this awesome emulsifier. All right, and that has been it for our glycerol stearate and PEG100 stearate ingredient deep dive. If you have more questions, please make sure you are reading through the full written encyclopedia entry linked in the description box below this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye.